Okay, guys. Welcome back. Um, today we're going to continue on chapter 8. That is the chapter that deals with rational expressions, equations, and inequalities. We're going to wrap up today. We're going to finish up inequalities. And then we're going to take a couple, two, three days to actually do the word problems, OK? You have work word problems and all sorts of good stuff. But you got to learn how to walk before you run. So let's learn how to solve rational inequalities. Kind of similar to solving rational equations, OK? But there's a lot of different steps. So please make sure you understand this. A rational inequality is an inequality that contains a rational expression. That's pretty simple. Here are some examples of rational inequalities. All of these guys are rational inequalities. That has a rational expression. Remember, it's rational expression if there's a variable or polynomial in the denominator. Okay, that's what makes it rational. That's a rational inequality. That's a rational inequality. That's a rational inequality. All of these are examples of rational inequalities. It's an inequality where you're going to have one um, rational expression. OK? Does that make sense so far, guys? Yes, no, maybe kind of sort of? OK. So how to rational inequalities? That's, that's kind of weird. How to? How to solve rational inequalities. That may make it better. All right. I'm going to do my best here, guys, to walk you through this. So please pay attention. Number one, set the given inequality to 0 so that a single quotient is simplify, simplified rational expression is formed on one side. We already have it like this. It's already set. It's already done. We're golden. They already gave it to us in rational inequality format. So if they don't, whatever you have on both sides, you've got to set it equal to 0. So that means one of the sides you've got to bring over to the other side. I don't care which one, but one of them will have to move because you need to set it equal to 0. Now, step 2. Solve for and find the undefined uh, values of x by setting the numerator of the rational expression equal to 0 and the denominator to not equal 0. OK, let me explain what happens here. In this particular case, we already know how to find values that are excluded, correct? So what do we know x cannot equal? OK, we know that from right down, whoa, from right down here, all okay, right, from that guy, x cannot equal 4. So we know that x cannot equal 4. OK? But we have that x plus 3, OK, has to be set equal to 0. So x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So x is greater than or equal to negative 3. OK? You with me so far? Yeah. You sure, guys? OK. Now, step 3. Graph the, va the x value intervals found in step 2 on the real number line equation. OK? So we're going to graph the x value intervals found in step 2 on a real number line, um, on a real number line. All right? So let's see what we got here. OK. I have got. I know that x is greater than or equal to negative 3, right? but not equal to 4. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to try to graph these values. So let's go ahead and make a little graph. Here's my 0. Here's my negative 3. OK, and let's just put a 4 here because the 4 is going to be there. Now, this is the part. <laughs> that gets everyone all messed up, the choosing test points. Okay. Once we have the, the values, we knew that there was a negative 3 involved here. We got the negative 3. There was a 4 involved here. We got the 4. We have to test 
each interval. You have to choose test points from each interval from step three to find the sign of your original rational expression. So, to get to negative three, guys, didn't I have to go from infinity all the way to get to negative three? Isn't the interval from here all the way to here, isn't that interval negative infinity to negative three? You with me? You with me? Then, from negative three, don't I have an interval from negative three to four? And then, from four, don't I have an interval from four to infinity? Okay, this, this can get confusing, guys. Talk to me. I see some faces. Talk to me. That's what I'm here for. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, my brother. Yes, it should be a negative three. Yes, my bad. Yes, sir. Yes, we are using interval notation here. Yes. Correct, sir, my brother. We don't know what's equal yet or not, so we can't put any brackets. And, um, yeah, we can't do anything yet. We have to wait until we test the points. Is it all with me so far of what I've done so far? Yes, no, maybe, kind of, sort of. I'll erase it and repeat it again if I have to. Talk to me, sir. Thank you. Yes, because in the beginning I got x is not equal to 4 because x cannot equal 4. If x equals 4 there, I have a 0 in the denominator, and that's undefined. Yes, sir. Well, even though it doesn't equal 4, I had to put 4 in my intervals. So I had a negative 3, and that interval is from negative infinity to 3. That's the interval that encompasses this part. Then from negative 3 to negative 4, that's another interval that's possible. Then from 4 to a positive infinity, that's another interval that is possible. Are you guys with me? Yes. What do you mean, why did I take out the denominator? Correct. I didn't take out the denominator. I want x minus 4 um, cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal 4. Hence, for, for look at what it says here, guys. Solve 4 and find the undefined values of x. The undefined values of x are the denominator values. Um, by setting the numerator of the rational expression equal to 0 and the denominator not equal to 0. You sure, my man? I appreciate this. Thank you. Good questions. Great questions. Talk to me, guys. I don't want to keep going forward without honesty. I, so far, I'm very happy with you guys. We're good so far? All right, now, now this is where it gets a little bit crazy. Okie dokie. All right. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, so we're going to have to choose a test point now within each interval formed by step 3 to determine the sign of x plus 3 and x minus 4. Then determine the sign of the quotient. Okay. In the original... In the original equation, uh, inequality, the quotient of x plus 3 divided by x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. So is that answer going to be positive or negative? Positive, right? This these, these initial answers, the quotient has to be positive, correct? So in these test intervals, when we're testing these intervals, we have to make sure that we get positive answers. Those are, that's the only way that we're going to get our test intervals. So, what the heck do I do? In this first test interval of negative infinity to negative 3, um, let's see. Hold on. Okay, guys. So, let's go ahead and first use this first interval of negative infinity to negative 3. Remember that we're working with two things. We're working with the, with the numerator of x minus 3 and a denominator of x minus 4. Correct? 
Okay? All right. So we're going to use these guys for each one of these test points. And this first interval, give me a number within negative infinity to negative 3. Okay, negative 4. When I put negative 4, guys, negative 4 minus 3 over negative 4 minus 4. That's going to be negative 7 over negative 8. But isn't that answer going to render me a positive? So that works. Anything in that interval works. Why? Because I'm looking for a positive. Now let's look in green at this interval right here between 3, negative 3 and 4. Give me any number you want between negative 3 and 4, brothers. 2. Okay. Okay, we, we'll, we'll do 2. 2 minus 3 over 2 minus 4. So this is going to be... Wait. 2... That's going to be uh, negative 1 over... Over negative 2, that's going to be 1 half. Okay. How about if it's... Uh, is it plus 3 up there? That's why. No wonder. I was like, why is this not working? Okay, thank you, guys. So that's plus 3. So there you go. So that's positive 5 over negative 2. Is that a positive answer? No. So is any point in this interval going to work? No. What? Who? What? Wait, what? No, guys, this would have worked because negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And negative 1 over negative, you still would have had a positive 1 over 8. Thank you. Thank you, my brothers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Last one. Okay, first of all, can 4 be a potential answer? No. No. So if you wanted to, you know that you could put like an open circle there because 4 is not going to work. So give me any other value in between that interval, between 4 and infinity. Why would you say 7,000? 5 is a nice one, yes. 5 plus 3 is 8. 5 minus 4 is 1. That's a positive 8 over 1, so that's positive, so that works. Except 4, but that's why we have a parenthesis, not a bracket. Right, my brother? So, in this particular case... My solution will be negative infinity to negative 3 with a bracket because negative 3 does work in union with 4 to positive infinity. Now, I promise you this is all we're going to do today. Okay, There's nothing else to learn or anything. That's what we do. So first, find your domain basically, find your restriction of the denominator and set your numerator equal to zero. Okay? Once that is done, yes sir. The answer down here. Okay, once you find that your two your two values, you plot those values. Find your intervals. Test each interval and make sure that it's the same sign as your original problem. Sir. Okay, thank you, my brother. He asks, I don't understand how I got this part here, this 8 over 1. Well, we said that in this interval from 4 to infinity, we chose 5 as x. 5 plus 3 is 8. 5 minus 4 is 1. So 8 over 1, my brother. Does that make sense, kid? Yes. No, thank you, man. We okay so far? We're going to do another one now, but... We kind of okay? Okay, yes, sir. Oh, all right. So let me go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, let's do a fresh one. First off, let's set the numerator equal to 0. So x minus 7 equals 0. And then set the denominator not equal to 0. So x is equal to 7. And x is not equal to negative 3. So I have negative 3, a 0, of course, and I have a 7. There are three intervals that are created here. This first interval right here, which is from negative infinity to negative 3. 
which of course you could put an open circle if you want because that negative 3 will never be the answer. Then you have the interval between negative 3 and 7. Then you have the interval between 7 and infinity. Before I go crazy and I keep going forward, please make sure that you got that part down, Pat, that that makes sense to you. Yes, sir, my brother. I'm sorry? No, yeah, the greater than or equal to. Um, the equal to doesn't matter, but the greater than does. In this particular case, when we're doing our test points, am I going to want positive answers or negative answers? Positive answers because the whole entire rational inequality is greater than zero. Yes. God, I keep making that same mistake. Yes, negative three. Negative three. Yes, thank you, bro. Sir. I put the open circle on the negative three because I know guaranteed 100% that cannot be a solution. And that's just a reminder for me. Thank you, Bubble. All right, now let us continue. All right, let's test. Oh, let me let me write these down first. Wait, I got my test points. What is this? Okay, I, I can see it all from here. Okay, give me a, a test point in the first. Okay, let's try negative four. Negative four minus seven over negative four plus three. That's negative eleven over negative one. That's going to be positive eleven. Yes, it works. That works. Give me a value between negative three and seven interval, please. Okay, I got a lot of different ones. I'm going to use negative two. Negative two minus seven over negative two plus three. That's negative nine over one, which is negative nine. So no, that is not a solution set because it's not positive. And then last but not least, give me any value in the interval of seven to, okay, he, they want to use seven itself. That's fine. Let's do 7 itself. 7 minus 7, 7 plus 3. Okay, that's 0 over 10. So that's not positive or negative. We're going to need another one. 8. Okay, so 8 minus 7 and 8 plus 3. That's going to be 1 over 11. That's positive, so that works. So that works as well. So my solution set would be negative infinity comma negative 3 in union with um, 7 positive infinity. Um, and actually, wait, can it be? Well, you know what? 0 is not positive or negative, so that's neutral. So yes, it can be. It can be a 7. Yes. Negative 3 cannot be a bracket because remember from the beginning we said that x cannot equal negative 3. Sir? Um, most of the time, yes. Not always, but some, yes. Not, not always, no. Yes. Okay, because here, when I use 7, did I get a negative? I got a 0, right? 0 is neutral. So... If it's neutral, it's the same thing as being positive. If it came out negative, then it wouldn't have been a, a solution. No, because negative 3 is undefined. When I plug negative 3 into here, my brother, negative 3 plus 3, that equals 0. And you can't have a denominator there like that. Correct. That's correct. Parentheses. Correct, sir, my brother. Yes, sir. Because zero is neutral. It's not negative. Neutral or positive, more or less the same thing. Yes. I don't know what you're saying, my man. Okay, if it said greater than, what about it? 
then 7 would not have been included, correct? Exactly, because it's not equal. Okay, move on. Okay, so this is not hard, it's just time consuming and tricky. Okay, now, now they're throwing a little bit of a, of a monkey wrench. Okay, right now, right off the bat, uh, this isn't set to zero, but I gotta set it to zero, so how can I set this equal to zero? Very good, thank you very much. Very good, guys. So I got x plus 3 over x minus 1 minus 2 is greater than is greater than 0. Okay? You with me so far? Yeah. Now, you have to, believe it or not, I know this is crazy. <laughs> uh, it says it, thank you. You have to add these together, guys. You got to add these together and you have to use a common denominator. So what's going to happen? You have x plus 3 over x minus 1 minus 2 times uh, x minus 1 over x minus 1. Right? You guys see what I'm doing here? Because I've got to add rational expressions. Yes? Okay. So i got x plus 3 over x minus 1 minus parentheses 2x. Actually, you know what? Let's just distribute it. Make my life easier. Um, so you're going to have minus 2x plus 2 over x minus 1. So then, x minus 2x is going to be negative x plus 5 over x minus 1. And that is greater than 0. Please take a look at what I did. Step by step it. And then, of course, ask me if you have any questions. If you don't see how or why I got that. Yes, sir, my brother. Thank you. Yeah, once you got rid okay, yeah, you brought over the two. You're at this stage. Now you got to add these two together, my brother. And that's how I got to this and to that. And now I have this. That's my final inequality set to zero. Now from here, now from here we solve. So now, x, uh, negative x plus 5 gets set equal to 0, but x minus 1 gets set not equal to 0. So x is going to equal 5, and x is not going to equal 1. Are you guys with me so far? You promise? Yes? Okay. So, here's my 0, here's my 1 where I'm going to do an open bracket, right? And then here's my 5. Now look, aren't we saying that x does equal 5? That's an easier way to know that it's going to be a bracket or, or not. X will be, in, 5 will be included in this. I'm sorry? Yeah, it, in this case it's going to be greater than, but that's how you know which one is going to be greater than or equal to or greater than because they're going to tell you which one is going to be an actual value. But you're exactly right. Since I don't have an equal, it's technically not an, it's not technically not circled, but it is for our test, for our test purposes. Yes, sir. No, Bobble. Thank you for asking. He asked, he said, wouldn't it be x equals negative 5? When I subtract 5 to both sides, you're right, it is negative, my brother, but then I have to divide by a negative 1. Because I'm not solving for, for negative x, I'm solving for x. Thank you, sir. Okay? You guys with me so far? Yes, sir, my brother. Thank you. What's up? Because I always set, when I'm finding my, my x value and the x value that it cannot be, I set it equal to zero. Not greater than or less than. It's always, I oh, when I find these two points here, I'm setting the numerator equal to zero, regardless of the inequality sign. And then I'm setting the denominator not equal to zero, regardless of the inequality sign. Great questions. Do I continue? Yes. Yes? Okay. Now, my intervals, let's do our intervals. I've got from negative infinity to zero, I mean to one. 
So negative infinity to one. But hold on, hold on. Let's first put them out, bubble. Then one to five. Then five to infinity. Okay, I'm not that bright, guys. I just make my life easy. I try to just follow suit. You're always going to have three intervals. That's the good thing. So now let's test it. Okay, the first test point they want to use is zero. So, okay, so negative zero plus five over zero minus one. That's going to be five over negative one. That's a negative. That's negative five. Am I looking for negative numbers or, or pop? So this is no. Let's do the red interval. Between 1 and 5, what you got? Come again? 2. Okay, let's do 2. So I got negative 2 plus 5 over 2 minus 1. That's 3 over 1. That works. That's positive. Excellent. And then my last but not least, let's do 6. So I got negative 6 plus 5. And then 6 minus 1, that's going to be negative 1 over 5. So that's negative 1 fifth. So that's a big fat no as well. So what is the only solution here? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, because the x is negative, bro. So the only one that works is this bad boy right here. 1 comma 5 is the solution to this inequality. No? Huh? You don't need to put a negative 2, bro. Remember, it's negative x. So when x, I chose 2. 2 times negative is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Danny. Negative. When x is 2, what's 2 times that negative? Danny. He's not seeing it. You sure? Okay, so then that's how I got three. Because the X was negative, Papa. You had a, a, a negative in front of the X. Yes, sir, then yes, sir. Come again? No, it's not going to be equal to because you only have greater than there. Because it is a solution of the graph but it's not a solution of the total inequality. We had just explained that. Anything else on this, my brothers, before we move on? You sure? Yes, sir. Um, no, you cannot use... Well, yeah, um, no, you cannot use 5 because it's not greater than or equal to. It's only greater than. Good, good, good. All right, let's do another one. A little bit more complicated, though. Ooh. Wow. Look what's happening here. <laughs> Don't stress. Don't stress. Remember what I said, guys. Set the numerator to zero, and then set the denominator to not equal zero. But remember, when we're setting the numerator equal to zero, this is the zero product property, isn't it? So when I set 5x minus 2 equal to zero, x plus 4 equal to zero, and then x minus 5 not equal to 0, I'm going to get the following. x will equal 2 fifths, x can equal negative 4, and x cannot equal 5. Very good, son. Let's get my intervals out there. Negative 4, 0, 2 fifths, and 5. I'm going to put an open circle on 5 because we know that cannot be it. These are less thans. So I'm not going to even fill those in to not confuse anybody. Yes, sir, you are. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I have from negative infinity to negative 4, right, my brothers? Then I have from negative 4 to 2 fifths. Oh, no, actually, yeah, just three intervals again. Oh, uh, no, actually, no, 4. And then I have from two-fifths to five, and then I have from five to positive infinity. Does everyone see how I got those intervals? 
If you do not, then just ask me. You guys with me? Okay, we'll color code to make sure that we're all on the same target. Give me a value in the first interval between negative infinity and negative 4. Negative 5. Okay, let's do negative 5. So I got 5 times negative 5 minus 2. That's going to be a negative 27. Um, times negative 1. So that's going to be a positive 27. Over, you said five? Oh, negative five, yeah. So that's going to be negative ten. Okay. Is this going to work? Yes, it will because it's looking for less than. So it's looking for negatives. So this interval does work. Yes. Now, in red, between negative four and two fifths, which one do you want to use? I use the easy one. Zero. Okay. <laughs> uh, five times zero minus 2, that's going to be times uh, 0 plus 4 is 4, so I got negative, so that's going to be negative 8 over 0 minus 5 is negative 5, so that's going to be a positive, so that will not work because I'm looking for a negative, so no. Let's look at the green one. Give me a value between 2 fifths and 5. 1, thank you, that's a great one. So I've got 5 minus 2 which I'll just do it in my head. 5 minus 2, so you're talking about 3 times 5, which is 15, over, we said 1, so negative 4, so that is going to negative, so yes, that works. And then last but not least, um, between 5 and infinity, 6. So I got 30 minus 2, which is 28, times 10, over 1. That's going to be 280. That's a positive. So that is not one of the ones that works. So my final answer here, gentlemen, be negative infinity, comma negative 4, union with 2 fifths to 5. Why is it not in bracket, Mr. Morrow? Because the original question was, a less than or a greater than, not a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Does that make sense, guys, what I just did there? Promise? Yes, sir. What's up, bubble? For the black interval? For the black interval, we used six, my brother. For the green interval, I believe we used one. We used one. Does this make sense, guys? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Let's do another one, okay? M may I? Yeah. I know there's a lot of stuff. Yes? Okay, you guys are writing this down, right? All this stuff? Okay. Now, first thing we got to do here, okay, is we're going to have to add these together so I can have one common denominator and one unified numerator. That's basically what's happening. Whenever you're given all this complex crap, all you're really there just telling you is, hey, just add them all together. Get one beautiful rational inequality on one side and have the other side to be set to zero. So you guys aren't stupid. You know multiply x by x to these. I know it's kind of messy, but I know you're going to multiply x plus 3 to top and bottom there, right? So, yo! Okay, the question is, can, since you have an inequality sign, can you multiply the x and x plus 3 to both sides? It has nothing to do with anything. If, if you had an equation, Jimmy, yes. The answer is yes. But since you have an inequality, you have test points. So if you bring the x times x plus 3 over to the right side, by multiplying and doing it correctly, that's how you would solve this equation. You're going to have the value of x, one particular value of x. You're not going to have the undefined value, and you're not going to have your test point value. So it's a little bit different than, than the equations. Thank you, son, for asking. So now this is going to be 2x 
plus 2x plus 6 over x times x plus 3. So this will be 4x plus 6 over x times x plus 3. Is everyone with me here? Okay, now, there's going to be quite a few more intervals this time. First, yes, yes? I would not suggest working with x squared plus 3x, and I'm going to show you now why. Don't we have to set the numerator equal to 0 and the denominator not equal to 0? So x is set not equal to 0, and x plus 3 is set not equal to 0. So my values, my test point values, it's going to be x equals uh, negative 3 halves, and x cannot equal 0, and x cannot equal negative 3. Does everyone see that? Because that's really the important part here. Once you get that, it's pretty simple from there. Because now, I make my intervals. Okay? So I have a negative 3 halves. I have a 0 this time that's valid in there. And I have... Oh, wait. Hello? That's negative 3. Okay, so it's going to go over here. Negative 3. Open circle and open circle. Okay. So I'm going to have four intervals again. The first interval is going to be from negative infinity to negative 3. Right up to here. You with me, guys? Then, second interval from negative 3 to negative 3 halves. Third interval from negative 3 halves to 0. And then last interval from 0 to infinity. Does everyone see how and why I got those intervals? I see all of you are paying attention to me, and I thank you for that. But I don't see many people writing this down. So if you're just trying to focus and pay attention, I respect that. But you're going to have to write these things down eventually, guys, because you're going to have to get the rhythm for it, okay, the flow. Now, first of all, am I looking for a positive quotient or a negative quotient? Well, how do we know that I'm looking for a negative quotient? How do we... Don't, can't freaking... Okay, that's kind of freaked me out, guys. I'm sorry. Um, that was kind of freaky. All right. So now, let's see what we got here. Let's do our first test point. We'll do it in blue. What's, uh, what's one value in this interval? Negative 4? You want to do negative 4? Okay, so let's do negative 4. So I got 4 times negative 4 plus 6. That's going to be negative 10 over negative 4 times negative 1 is 4. So that's negative, so that one works. Give me one second. All right, guys. So sorry about that. So this first one was negative, so that test point did work. Now let's look at the second Interval between negative 3 and negative 3 halves. What do you think would be an easy one? I go negative 2, yeah, for sure. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. And then negative 2 times 1 is, again, negative 2, guys. That's a positive 1. So that's a big fat no. That isn't going to work. The third interval, what's a nice one between negative 3 halves and, and 0? Negative 1 I would do. So negative 4 plus 6 is 2. And then negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So that would be negative 1. So yes, that one does work. And last but not least, between 0 and infinity, 1. 4 plus 6 is 10. And 1 plus uh, times 4 is 4. So that's a positive. So negative, that does not work. My, my solutions would be negative infinity to negative 3 and negative 3 halves, comma, 0. Okay? So that makes sense. You promise, guys. Yes, sir. 
Um, odds are you will not have three solutions. Yes. For, like, yeah, I can, uh, yeah, you're, you're not going to have three solutions. And then we got two more, but we don't have much time for this. Um, but look, let me just show you this. If they tell you this right here, R of X is greater than or equal to zero if R of X equals three X plus 3 over X minus, minus 8. Don't I just have to go that is greater than or equal to zero? Okay, that's an easy one. And then here for this one, I got to subtract 3 over 2x plus 1 to both sides. And then I add them together, getting the common denominators, and then I do everything the same way. Is that, is that cool? Yeah, so in this case, okay, I just don't have time to do it all, but look, real quick, real quick. I subtract, thank you for your honesty, to both sides. Guys, please. So then I have 1 over x minus 4 minus 3 over 2x plus 1 is now greater than or equal to 0. And now I add those two together by getting the common denominator. Okay? All right, guys. Let me give you your, your homework because it's a handout. Thank you, guys.